pre-consumed with some beta alanine as well. Two scoops of bloodshot roaring grape. But I, I, I didn't bring back the bubblegum hostility. I got a peach burst, so you know, grape and peach. I mean, it's all right, you know, they're both kind of fruity flavors, but I do kind of like to match them up. So, that was a couple of minutes ago. I'm already feeling some little something something from the beta alanine. So by the time I actually get to the gym and do a little bit of a warm up, it should be, uh, you know, beginning to take legit effect. So, back to legs. Back to freaking legs. Hamstrings, same as normal. Laying hamstring curls. Maybe some seated hamstring curls and like potentially some cable RDLs. I'll really just have to kind of see what looks good. And quads, I think quads will look something like this. Maybe two or three sets of leg extensions heavy, right? Sort of acting as like a, not a pre-exhaustion, but, you know, almost as a pre-exhaust. Like those sets will kind of get me tired out enough in terms of my quads where when I squat I won't have to go so heavy so you know maybe two or three sets of single leg leg extensions maybe double leg I don't know, I'll just have to kind of see how it feels and then I'm thinking just barbell squats until satisfaction that sounds about right to me so last leg day was four sets with four plates and it was like failure at 17 reps, failure at 12, barely got 10, and then failure at 7. So if I can emulate something like that, at least in terms of the intensity, I'll be satisfied. And it doesn't have to be that same weight either. You know, if I were to be able to go in and like for whatever reason today, I just felt weak. Fucking exhausted level of weak. And I can only squat three, uh, you know, maybe two plates and a 25 for a 10, and I hit failure. I'd be satisfied with that. Because right? the point isn't the weight. You know, I'm just trying to you know, go as crazy as I can on legs in terms of, you know, my subjective strength level. You know, don't, uh, just because I'm more experienced doesn't mean that the sets that I do are, you know, at an intensity that you can't do. Right now I'm kind of speaking more so to like the uh, the beginner lifter. Or not beginner, but intermediate, whatever. You get what I'm saying. You know, I could do a set of four plate squats for 10. But if I had three plates left in the tank and I just racked it. Or three reps left in the tank and I just racked it. But you did, you know, three plates for fucking 15. And that you actually failed. Then your set was fucking better than mine. You know, that's... um. Yeah, that's kind of how I perceive the quality of sets at the gym. It's like, the weight is cool, but it's all about your own exertion, you know. I think I need to kind of rewire my brain to not be so intimidated by a leg day, you know. Because when, when I do chest, even if I'm going super heavy on incline bench, uh, usually I do get a spot, but let's say without a spot. Ugh. Like, that doesn't freak me out. That doesn't make me anxious or anything. You know, back, crazy heavy, bent over barbell rows, you know, you know, whatever. That doesn't, it doesn't mess with me. But legs, I can tell right now I'm kind of anxious for these squats. Just because they're, uh, you know, stressful, you know. You really, to have a good squat set, you really have to fucking push yourself. So, it's not like I dread it, but I can tell I'm getting a little bit nervous. You know, ideally, I'll be able to go in on a leg day. You know, I could do fucking 10 sets of squats, all to failure, all in a row. And, like, that could be easy for me. You know, because, like, my perception of the squats, it's like I'm almost making them harder than they need to be. Right? That's, this might just be something that I get and you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but whatever. So, fast forward... A few minutes, I'll do my little calf warm up, and then we can jump on to uh, whatever the first set of hamstrings is going to be. But pretty sure it's going to be laying leg curls. I lost my um, my little Beats charger case, so now I'm tethered into the phone. 
Not ideal. Not ideal. If you haven't switched to wireless, you're, you're behind the curve, man. But I'm feeling extremely, I don't want to just say strong, but <laughs> honestly, I can tell that my hamstrings are physically bigger right now. It's just from doing those warm-up sets, I mean, I can almost feel my calves running into them as if they were already fully pumped. So, I mean, <laughs> I think by the time that my hamstrings are fully pumped and we move on to, you know, squats or whatever, <laughs> it's almost going to be like I have knee wraps on. Because when I get to the bottom of the rep, my calves are going to run into my hamstrings and give me some cushioning. But uh, I guess we'll just have to see. So until then, I think throw the stack around. But I'm going to be a bit methodical with these reps, go a little bit slower, really try to hold it for a moment at the top. Not like a whole second, but just, just a moment of extra squeezing. And I think, I mean, honestly, based on the way that the warm-ups felt, I might sit here for the whole hamstring workout. So let's just get it started. Let's do one more again. Okay. Let's uh cool. Oops. Let's do the same weight, but this time this reps will be a bit more rapid instead of so slow and controlled. Come on. Hmm. Just keep busting these out until I can't get 10 reps with the stack. No more of this full stack mumbo jumbo. Let's be a little bit more controlled with it. So if I were to just kind of be, I don't want to say loose, but let's say if I was just going for reps, you know, let's say I could get maybe 25 reps with this weight, just throwing it up and down, back and forth, whatever. But that's just not the kind of style of set I want to do. You know, now I want to go a bit slower, really hold it. Like it's, it'd be like doing a set of curls where you just throw them up and down really quick or, you know, half second hold, then back down nice and slow, right? Obviously you're gonna get less reps like that, but I think the action of slowing down and really squeezing, it's definitely another kind of stimulus which is gonna give you some growth, right? You've got just high ass tension, like from the sets I was doing earlier, just throwing the whole stack around really quick, ton of fucking tension on the quads, on the hamstrings, I mean. But now, less tension, but going for more so of a burn. I remember reading some shit about how there's like, four triggers for muscle growth. It was like just pure mechanical stress, kind of that burning sensation, and then, if I don't remember what these other two were, then I guess it's not that important. So an even mix of heavy shit and lighter shit done very slowly with a good squeeze, I think it's good for you. I feel like I've said that a fucking thousand times over the last like three videos, but true nonetheless. Ugh. <sighs> 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 
Hamstrings are now complete. And that didn't freaking take long. That only took like 30 minutes. Whew. Just sitting here and feeling the back of my legs. Dude, they I don't want to say car tire, let's say bike tire level pressure. Whew. So even though legs is in terms of volume, just about halfway done. The second half is where it actually kind of has to get serious. So I'm gonna go warm up on the leg extension. Get that first set done and just try to go as crazy as possible. The leg extensions all warmed up, but rather than throw around as much weight as possible, I'm going to be a bit more methodical with it, go lighter. And instead of just doing normal reps, I'm going to kind of do some pause tempo reps or sort of half reps. Let me explain. So single leg, I'll go halfway up, pause it for just a moment, and then hit the top and really squeeze it just for like a millisecond and come back down same thing over and over again you know it just makes it a little bit more I guess I can just say intentional right because I could do a set with the same weight and just bounce it around or I could go a bit slower really kind of get more of a burn out of it you know I'm obviously one to say you should try to go as heavy as you can go for a legit set but it doesn't mean every set has to just be like aiming for the whole stack or whatever you know I can get a good ass set of curls with the 80s, kind of swing it a little bit, and I'd probably be just as satisfied if I do a set with the 50s, slot a lot slower, right? more controlled, really burn. No matter what fucking style of set you do, if you go hard, right, it's contributing to some good shit. So let's throw this around for a few. Let's do a heavy set next. Let's, um, I think I'm going to change it up this time. Set a barbell, let's do Smith machine squats. But I want to be a little more pre-exhausted. So let's do two sets. Well, two more sets here. And then go do some Smith machine squats. 
Okay. All right. Let's do one set with the sack and then Smith machine squat time. Hmm. Whoops. There we go. Okay, I lied. Smith Machine's about to get taken. Barbell instead. Those safeties were way too fucking low. Whew. I'm glad I didn't freaking hurt myself just then. I need to go a little heavier because that set was kind of turning into um, a test of endurance, not really a test of actual physical strength. So it was re racking, three and a half plates, and raise these safeties two notches. Whew. Why the fuck would you not squat with safeties? I'll never fucking understand you guys who do that. Whew. Come on. Let's see, one more. One more finish with leg extensions and then we're good. Whew. I probably could have got two more. I'm gonna try to make sure I really decimate the last one. Fuck. Oh, fuck. 
<laughs> I didn't even hit failure, I just lost my balance. Uh, I had four more. God, well, eh, fuck it. Oh, must have let my form get a little bit sloppy, pushing the weight. Let's just go finish with the leg extensions. Ooh. Damn. Not ideal. But yeah, perfect fucking example. That could just fucking happen to you, man. Without safeties, I, let's just say this, you know, to say the least, I wouldn't be having an awesome time right now. All right. One more set of leg extensions and then done. I really do like squats in the second period or in the second half of legs. Well, quads at least. Okay. Oh. All right. Let's go discuss. Oh. All right, it's exactly fucking you know, 0.1 seconds after that last set. So I'm still just a touch out of breath. So let's just, uh, let's just check out the pump and then discuss it after. I didn't have any clean laundry, so I couldn't find any really short shorts. And not because I didn't do my laundry either. You know, I'm just at home right now and I forgot to pack, you know, extra clothes. Okay. Oh man. Whew. I can see my fucking hamstrings hanging under my fucking quads. That is fucking nice. So let's uh let's see how they look just in a fucking relaxed standing position. There we go. Ooh. That's a set of quads if I've ever seen one, I tell you what. Oh. oh my goodness. Alright, what else even is there? Not much. I mean, just fucking kind of standing sideways. Woo. They definitely feel fucking pumped. Let's, uh, let's do one kind of breath hold shot, get the veins poking out the left one, and then have a seat for a moment. Oh my goodness. That's enough. Pumped? I'd say my legs are reasonably proportional to my, you know, my upper half. But my legs are definitely not overpowering my build. That's for sure. So hopefully... As this bulk progresses and I implement more heavy pressing in the quad days rather than just leg extensions, you know, like squats, maybe Smith machine squats, hey, potentially even leg press. It's been a while since I've done it. Who knows? Maybe it's grown back on me. But it's not like I necessarily think that that style of, you know, stimulus for the quads is guaranteed going to be better. But I can say with certainty it feels different. It gives me a different sensation, lets me kind of feel a different level of fatigueness. The pump, well, pretty comparable. You know, I can sit on leg extensions and I kind of have sat on leg extensions as the primary movement, if not the only movement on my quad days. And I've gotten reasonable results, but I think overall pressing, I think I've been slacking on it a bit much. So in terms of how this lifts is, uh, or how my training is going to change for this bulk in particular. More pressing, more squats. That's on the freaking docket. And I'm glad I changed up the style too. Because right now my adductors feel really good. Like doing that, even that last heavy set with, um, with 450, it didn't bother my adductors at all. I think that probably goes to, uh, goes to show the benefit that I get from a solid warm-up. And also maybe even fucking pyramiding. You know? I've, uh, I kind of have been... Just jumping straight into squats with my heaviest weight. You know, fuck, man. Maybe I got to ease into it a little bit more. So, I know that goes against what I've been saying in the past. 
about how I want to jump into my heaviest shit. But, you know, don't think that I ever think I know everything when it comes to fucking training. I don't think it's even possible to be a total fucking perfectionist master. But by way of keeping your mind open to new ideas and not getting locked into the fucking same routine day in and day out. Keeping your eyes open for new shit and being able to kind of internalize it, understand it, and implement it into your freaking routine, the better, right? So, if you've been doing the exact same diet, or, well, not diet, if you've been doing the exact same training routine, and, you know, maybe you look at a picture of yourself a few months ago or a year ago, and you look exactly the same, then all that means is that the routine that you've been doing, you know, combined with your diet, of course, is just maintaining your build. You know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Eventually, I'll probably reach a point where I just want to maintain where I'm at. You know, and not everybody's a total freak, uh, like, muscle addict who's trying to get bigger month after month, year after year. So, maintenance may not be... Well, maintenance definitely is not a bad scenario. But maintaining your build, like maintaining exactly where you are, just staying plateaued, but you don't want to. Like, you actually do want to progress, either, like, bulk up or cut down, and you're just staying the same. I mean, I think we've all heard the fucking definition of insanity. So, I think that's pretty much fucking it. I'm out of here. Let's get in the car and roll. I got some food to eat. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I just sort of understood the idea that I was trying to say earlier in the car is I want to get to a point of comfortability with squats where I don't have to get hyped up at all to do a set to complete failure, right? Because right now I'm at kind of a level where I can get a crazy hype song plan and, you know, especially if I'm just kind of extra excited you know, I can do a 10 out of 10 absolutely demonic set of squats, right? Probably the last one I did that hard was, um, I don't know. The squats from last leg day were pretty good. I'm still a little bit better at squatting hard with heavier weight just because I reached failure earlier rep-wise. Like that first set of three plates, like sure it was hard, but I think the only reason I, well... I think it was just extra difficult for me personally because it was just a lot of reps. Like it was kind of getting more so into a burning sensation, which I need to get a little bit more comfortable with pushing through. But yeah, the more, I mean, honestly today, even compared to last leg day, I felt much more comfortable doing that much volume for squats. Volume being just like, you know, number of sets. So that is good for me. You know, who do you think is going to get bigger legs? Or, well, maybe let me rephrase. Who do you think is going to have an easier time on a leg day? You know, the guy who has to be perfectly in the zone with, like, the perfect song playing. And, like, he has to be really excited. And then he can do a really good set. Or the guy who can just kind of walk up to the squat rack, you know, not having to rely on hype. Just relying on the fact that he can exert himself to 100% like that, like just, like it's second nature. You know, that's kind of what I wanna, that's a level at which I wanna reach for my training. Like for hamstrings, it's not, I think I'm getting, a, you know, I'm getting there with hamstrings because I could do all those sets to pretty much fucking total failure, like barely even be able to move the weight on those last few reps. You know, and for me to reach that level of exertion on the hamstrings, it's not too hard. But with quads, I think I gotta toughen up. I gotta toughen up my freaking mind. And part of that is just from experience, you know? I get, I'd say over the next couple of leg days, the more sets of squats that I get through, the more comfortable I'll be under the weight, you know, the easier it's gonna be for me to just like fucking hit failure with four or five plates like nothing. So that's another thing I kinda wanna work on, right? So I'm sure you can kind of understand that a little better now than how I was trying to say it in, uh, you know, on the way here. But now, fuck man, I just gotta go home and chill. I just gotta eat. That's all there is to it. I'll probably do some egg whites, 
I got some steak. Uh, what else do I have? A bunch. Of, I've got a bunch of rice packets. Cheddar broccoli, which I know I like. Probably get a couple of those going to the microwave. You know, I'm gonna get a rice cooker. I've kind of been put on the rice cooker pill, as it were. Uh, just because then you got a ton of fucking hot and ready rice all the time. It just makes sense. You can just scoop it out and weigh it. And you got all right, perfect. So I think I'll get one of those. People have been telling me to get an air fryer. I don't know, man. Maybe. Kind of kind of feels like a chore, but I only ever hear good things about it. So, you know. The easier you can make it to get food ready, right, the less effort it's going to take for you to actually get it down into your system. So, that's kind of why, for the most part, I have a lot of pre-packaged foods, or basically, like, foods that are already prepped. All you kind of have to do is heat them up. The rice packets. I like the ramen. I like, uh... I like minute rice, big red box, because with that, I'll have to add this into it the next full day of eating video. This is a, yeah, I like that a lot, because you can just pour it out into a bowl, you know, whatever, three, four cups worth. I uh, I don't know the exact amount, I kind of just go by feel, or not by feel, but I just sort of know how much water is necessary, but big bowl of dry rice, basically. I pour in just the exact right amount of water, put a fucking, um... You know, paper towel on top of it just so it doesn't boil over in the microwave. And then after five minutes, it's just perfectly cooked. Yeah, I gotta weigh it out and figure out just how much water I do for that. That is fucking sick. You know, the microwave is a powerful tool. I'll even fucking microwave egg whites a little. It gets kind of weird. Honestly, that's really more of a dieting hack for me. Because uh, one of the years that I was in a dorm... I was on the third floor. There's no real kitchen. The only kitchen was on the first floor. So the top floor did have kind of a cooking area, but really it's just a fridge, microwave, and a little sink. So what I would do is I'd still get eggs, but I would just uh, put them in a bowl, just the egg whites, of course, maybe three, and then microwave it for like 45 seconds, and then they'd just be perfectly cooked. I know it sounds kind of funky, but you know that's an easy 12-ish uh, grams of protein or so. I think I would do more than, I, I don't remember, I must have like, I must have sat there, cooked them, put some hot sauce or something on them, ate them, and then made another one, because I don't think I would just eat 10 grams of protein worth of eggs. I probably had maybe more like 30. I can't remember, that was a while ago. But you get the idea. You get the freaking idea. So, I'm definitely feeling fucking carved up. I'd say within the next week, we're going to reach that weight of um let's just say stability because right now i'm just kind of throwing on weight because every day i get more and more carved up from all the all the food that i'm eating because now i mean the fucking floodgates are open carbs upon carbs upon fats upon proteins meats i'm just taking it all in like a fucking furnace so this morning was 230 237.6 so over the next few days, I think I may, I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. I really don't know when my weight is going to, not plateau, but sort of reach a level of consistent growth, right? I've been saying this for fucking every car, uh, for every car talk, right? Instant spike the first week because I'm actually getting full, right? All my muscles are filling up with glycogen, carbs, and fucking sarcoplasm, whatever. So that's this first week. And then once I'm totally full... That's when I'll start just adding some muscle mass week by week. So, yeah, solid leg day. Hamstrings was pretty much perfect. Quads wasn't bad. I'd say it was even good. That set number seven, that set of squats where I lost my balance, that wasn't that awesome. Those, those reps were still good, but I mean, you know, the reps where you're actually making gains, it's not the first five reps of a set, it's the last five. And I'm pretty sure that's scientifically backed. Not that that's really my whole deal, but whatever. So. I guess I could have just re-racked it, like un unloaded the weight, reloaded it, and then done it again. But, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should have. Yeah, maybe I'm just being a baby by skipping it. Or by being done right there, but, you know, whatever. But I, I am not fucking kidding when I talk about the safeties. Why wouldn't you fucking use them? 
it uh like it just kind of it just adds to it just goes to freak me out when I see somebody squatting really fucking heavy with no safeties. Fuck man, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I'll do. I guess I'm uh, guilty of it too. You know, I would bench really heavy on incline with no safeties, but I could still like kind of unload the weight or just kind of roll it down my stomach or just fucking throw it onto the ground. But dude, with squats, man, <laughs> it's only you between you know, X hundred amount of pounds and the solid earth. You know, and I know you're a strong mofo, but fuck man, sometimes you can't, you can't plan for the unplannable, you know? So, it is guaranteed in your fucking best interest to squat without safeties. No, 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 whoa. To squat with safeties. Oh my goodness. I mean, come on. I know you don't plan on failing, but still. Oof. I've never, yeah, I've never bailed on a squat without safeties. Like, I've never thrown it behind me and, like, got jolted forward. Oof. And I don't plan on it either, you know. That first set where I failed, not ideal. I didn't have the safeties at the right height, but it's kind of just because I haven't squatted in that rack for a while. But, oof. Come on, man. I'll tell you this, you never freaking know what's going to happen. So the last thing you want to do is get fucking wrecked. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty fucking... That's a good rule to live by. Right, do whatever you can not to get fucking wrecked. You know, try not to wreck yourself in, uh, in most situations. So, home, food, cardio in the morning. Come on, man, just try it. Just try it. You don't even have to do anything crazy. You can just show up, walk on the treadmill, or... I guess if you can just walk around, you just walk around, you know, that's, uh, sometimes I'll do cardio on the treadmill, but usually I'm kind of more of a fucking seated, you know, recumbent bike fan. Just because when you walk on a treadmill or when you do Stairmaster or stuff like that, your torso kind of wobbles around. And, you know, it's not like I do my cardio and the whole time I'm like exhilarated. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, this is sick. God, I love doing this. Like, no, I'm just, like, I'd be bored out of my mind if I just sat there for 30 minutes and did nothing else, you know? So I bring my phone, and I fucking watch a show, or I play a game, and sitting on the seat of bike, my torso doesn't wobble around. All I'm doing is, you know, pedaling. So, you know, 30 minutes pass like nothing. Right? Who doesn't love a little bit of fucking phone time? So, that's all I gotta say, man. Hope you had a good lift. I'm gonna try to make sure my next leg day is harder than this one, and I'm gonna make sure the one after that is harder than that one. You know, that cycle's going to repeat. So, I'll freaking see you next time.